Michael Balak jest moim Państwa gościem, były reprezentant Niemiec, piłkarz między innymi Bayernu, Monachium i Chelsea London. Hi Michael, nice to see you. Uh, first of all, I wanted to ask you about the, the title race in the Premier League. What's your opinion about that? Well, it's tight and it's exciting. Um, it's good to have another team leading in terms of Liverpool. Uh, because Man City was dominating uh, last year and um, yeah, it's good to see that uh, they maintain the development, the strength after uh, arriving at the Champions League final last year. Now they, they carry on with a great, great performance, very stable. Um, Klopp did a great job, he developed a great team and um, yeah, it's a, it's a hard way to go because the Premier League is long, no break in the winter. Um, you could see some injuries now um, already, but that's part of, of every team and um, uh, they know that. Um, it's quite early to say there's something you can see who, who's winning. Good is that it's tight and exciting, but I think uh, it will be between Liverpool and Man City. Yeah, yeah and Liverpool slowed down a little bit uh, in January. Why do you think so? It, basically, now the title race is extremely tight, yeah? They are like head to head. I mean, it's a team who's playing a, a, a very much physical football. Yeah. Um, they have great players, but they're playing high intense football. Klopp loves to attack. He loves to chase the ball. Quick Heavy transition. metal. <laughs> exactly, all or nothing. Yeah. But um, yeah, they, they, they showed that and they showed that in terms of scoring a lot of goals. They don't stop after one, two, zero. They love it to, to attack, to keep going. And that's over a whole season, it's, um, it, it takes power, you know. It takes physical power, it takes mental strength to motivate, to come all, every game again on that m mental stage to yeah to overrun the, the, the opponent team the, the way he's playing so there is a little bit, bit of risk in certain periods over the season that the team drops energy yeah mentally physically and, and in January it looked a bit like that with the injuries together so they dropped a few points so now it's on club again to go in their mind to go in the players mind to bring them back to that stage but um, I think with the Champions League is starting, People, uh, the players will come back and uh, um, yeah. So if you would have to bet, we are on the betting company's uh, event, Liverpool or Man City at the, at the finish line, who's going to be first? Uh, <laughs> it's, you it's, put your it's, money on it's, that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's tough, uh, <laughs> if it's my money I would keep it right now, but <laughs> maybe. Um, it's, no, it's difficult, uh, of course, I have a little advantage Liverpool. Mm -hmm. But uh, Man City also came, they closed the gap. It could be also a physical, um, mental advantage a little bit. They know it's how also, to do it, yeah, I think already. it's also a bit depending on how they perform in the Champions League, mm -hmm. how, how far they go. I think this has a, that will have a big impact in terms of who's winning the league, who goes far in Champions League and how are the priorities you know, yeah. for each team. Of course, they, the Champions League is always something you really, really want to achieve, but especially for Liverpool, it could be that, that they want to win the league first because... 1990, yeah? That's exactly. Cool. Man City won it twice, so they will focus on the Champions League, always high ambition club, but for Liverpool to win that Premier League title since such a long time will be a focus number one, I'm pretty sure. So Liverpool does a little bit. Yeah, because of the <laughs> priority, yeah. you know, um, I think they pay more attention on the league. As a former Chelsea player, uh, you won a championship with, uh, with the Blues. How do you rate this project under Maurizio Sarri until now? It's very tricky at the moment because they can lose 0-4 to Bournemouth, but they can eliminate Tottenham at the FA Cup. So basically, uh, it's a very wobbly team, team at the moment. How do, how do you rate it? Yes, and it was under Conte as well. Um, this is not a team who goes into, into a, a season anymore and tells from the beginning we win it. We yeah. win the league. We win the Premier League. Uh, I would wish that, you know. And uh, but this is also what team I have. You know, sorry for me. Seems a, a very calm guy who, who understands football really well, who is well organized, who, who give the players a little bit more freedom. Might be under Conte, uh, Italian still tactically, but with a little bit more freedom. But you need to have the mentality to to go on top. You know to trying to win the league and this team at the moment it seems like they don't have it 
um, maybe the balance between technical skill players and, and leaders, it's not right or not 100% to win the league. So that's why results like that come, you know, losing 4-0 against Pomo. I have to remind a long time ago when, when this happened to a, to a weaker team. So that seems a bit um, for me that um, the, um, the spirit, the leading, uh, the leaders are not so there uh, anymore than it was before. And that's why I wanted to ask you after Arsenal game when they uh, lost, Maurizio Sarri said that this group of players is very difficult to motivate. What did he mean? <laughs> Very good question. Um, of course, it, it, some people would say, yeah, but it, it's his job to do that. But as a, as a great player, as or great players, they have a certain kind of great self-motivation, you know, and they know what to do. Of course, they're coming, but more if it comes to smaller matches, you play against weaker teams. Yeah. Sometimes you're not at the highest, highest motiva focus, yeah. motivation, but not when it comes to big matches. You know, there can't be a problem with, with the motivation. And if a coach says that, it's, that shows a lot what's going on in the dressing room, and that shows also that, it, that he's not 100% happy with the squad. Yeah. So it's also on the board to make some changes, maybe to go a different way slightly. It's always a process. You can't change a team from today to tomorrow. But you need to listen to that sentence from, from the coach, from people who are actually working with the team very close. As a world-class uh, midfielder yourself, uh, what do you think about this uh, um, central midfielder at Chelsea when Jorginho came and basically took the position of Kante and Kante went uh, a little bit more up? Is it a good idea to, to kill a little bit the, the world-class uh, defensive could, midfielder? You know football really well, eh? You could maybe I follow it, uh, yeah. read it I, really I, well. I'm asking an expert. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> no, I think that's, that's something, of course, uh, you can question. You know, because Kante, in this position for me, he's, he's, he's world-class uh, with his ability to run, to find the right moment to attack, but also coming back quick in that position. I think for me, he's not an offensive midfield player. Yeah. Uh, for me, as a number six, like he was best player in the Premier League uh, for Chelsea and for Leicester, that is his position and that's where the best players should be on their best position. Of course, they were brought to Junior and, and uh, he has to play or find a place as well, but uh, you're right, I, I agree totally when, when, when it comes to the to position of Kante. And my last question is, I have to ask you about that. Uh, Dietmar Hamann a few days ago said uh, in Sky that Robert Lewandowski is a problem for Bayern Munich. Is he not exaggerating? Uh, Could be a problem, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I don't think so. It was quite hard from, from Didi, I don't know what... Uh, he had a bad evening with, with Lever. I don't know why he's, he was so hard with him. No, but when it comes to analysis and, and teams are not doing so well, of course you attack the leaders, the best players in, uh, at the beginning. I think he should just take it. He answered um, and um, I, I think he's still in an, a very, very good player. But maybe he's not 100% happy at the moment. He wanted to leave the club a few times, you know. He's staying. Then he asked for for better players and um, what what happened at the moment is he's losing good players so Ribéry, Robin, it seems like less and less they're out of injuries or the contract will be not extended so he sees that you know he sees what's going on and and sometimes it shows a bit in the body language he was yeah. complaining about that as well on the pitch but this is very normal for for a player for high ambition players like Lewandowski they want the absolute best from themselves they expect it but also from the team from the club in any in any case and and that's that's his right but if we talk about performance I think he's still good it's just not the best period they have in general as a team you know they they talk about a lot of positions a lot of movements injuries uh, they're losing players they can't, couldn't sign players so all these small things small things um, People, people will criticize that, and of course, they criticize always the best players. Michael Balak, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michael Balak, for the annoying fans.